Okay. So today we're going to look at deformable parts in an X, um, specifically deformable parts for routing. So if you have a terminated component that you want to use in multiple locations and it has the same length everywhere, so you say you have like a fan with a 60 millimeter um, uh, lead wires on it and you want to use it in three different locations, but you don't want to necessarily make three different parts because that would get confusing because technically they're the same part number. Uh, this affects wiring harnesses a lot, obviously, because we have flexible components. So you could have, you know, the same part be used in 10 different places and in 10 different orientations. So what I've done is I've made two different deformable parts. This took a while to figure out because the documentation is a little bit not existent or barely existent. So one of these deformable parts has is you know they're both they're both uh, routing parts that use space reservations, so they aren't technically routed using the the component navigator wire navigator or anything. We just made a spline in the NX electrical application, and then um, we added a space res reservation onto the spline. And in, for both of the splines, you have uh, a point here, a point here on these two qualified routing parts, and then you have one additional um, control point in the center. So I'm going to go into the into the uh, spline edit context. So you've got these three control points. Um, two of them are tied to the components, and one of them is just a free floating one. The only difference between these two parts is that um, part one does not have a fixed spline length. So if we open up the the um, thing in the spline shape, we have slack mode none. So it's whatever you set these points to be, then the spline redraws and it doesn't have any sort of limitation. So there's no constraint on that. Uh, in part two, I have the constraint set to 70 millimeters. So that means that the spline length is going to maintain 70 millimeters. If you try and edit the spline so it's longer than 70 millimeters, it won't do it. Um, so I now these are both uh, well I didn't go through how to deform how to set up the deformable part but basically what you do to make this deformable is you go into menu tools define deformable part in this case it's already been defined so I can show how to how to redefine it or define it for a new part at a later time but basically you define a deformable part um, and then the magic happens when you put that deformable part into an assembly. And there's some tricks that go along with putting it into the assembly that are that are surprisingly important. Um, so we go to assemblies, add. I'm going to add both parts in here because they behave differently. So I'm going to add this one. I'm going to, where the placement is, I'm going to turn off keep constraints. This is a, a big pain point uh, that was causing a lot of issues. Um, but basically, we're going to turn off keep constraints so that no matter where you place it, it doesn't have like a fixed constraint. So this is a uh, deformable part number one. We're gonna apply that. And now we're gonna add deformable part number two, which has the length constraint um, on the spline. And we're gonna add that here. I'm gonna hit okay. And we're gonna look at the placement or the position info. So these, both of these parts have uh, partially constrained explicit override. Um, now, I can't say that I exactly know what that means right now, but basically you do, you want it to look like that. You want it to be the partially constrained explicit override. You don't want it to be a little fixed constraint, uh, which sometimes happen if you, happens if you forget to turn off that one setting when you're placing these parts into the assembly. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually deform these parts. So I'm gonna, in the context of the top level assembly, I'm going to right click and do deform and I'm going to edit that deformation. So this is, I just deformed part one. So what that means is now I can go into the move component, still in the top level assembly, select this ring terminal and pull it wherever I want. So we'll pull it like way up here. And so this is deformed in the assembly, but it's still the same part. So if I go into deformable part number one, it's gonna take a second to reload. This isn't changed. So the actual base part doesn't change. Um, I think 
in this context with no length constraint, that's probably not a great idea because then you basically have a part that doesn't represent what it what it actually is. I mean, you have you know this ring terminal to a ferrule that you can pull to whatever length you want, but the base part is still you know some fixed length. So where the cool thing is, is this number two where we've added the the length constraint on the spline because essentially what that represents is a fixed length wire. So let's see how this one behaves. And this took a little bit of finicking too, but basically we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to deform. We're going to hit OK. So now we have a, and what you can go is now we have deformable part number two shows in the part navigator for our top level assembly that we've created a deformable part. And so what I want to do here, because I want to be able to actually edit the control points of the spline is you, and this again took a little while to figure out. So you replace the reference set with the entire part. And that means that you can actually see the spline that drives this, um, this uh, uh, space uh, reservation. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move the ring terminal again. Different ring terminal because it's technically on a different part. And we want it to be about that. So we're gonna hit okay. And now we're gonna edit the control points on the spline. So I gotta go into application electrical because this is an electrically routed spline. I'm gonna double click on this spline and I can actually edit where the control points are. So I'm gonna move this control point down here. And what you'll notice is that the fixed length is still there. So we still have this fixed length of 70 millimeters for our spline. So we can move all these control points around and we can basically place this fixed length cable in whatever position you would need it to be in in a 3D assembly, but the base part is gonna be unchanged. So we can move it like that and we go back to our base part, which is deformable part number two. And this is still exactly the same. So super duper cool. It takes a lot of finicking to figure out in the first place, but now we should be able to go back to our reference set and replace it with the model and all that extra stuff goes away. So we have a flexible routing model.